and Happy New Year. Welcome to another episode of ARE Inside Connection, where we bring you the behind the scenes of the happenings at the ARE. My name is Loretto and I am the marketing coordinator. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Adrian Castillo. Adrian has been studying the Casey material for over 10 years. He volunteers his time with the ARE Southeast Gold Coast team in Florida. And in the past couple of years has started lecturing on more programs with us. And with his wide range of experience and captivate, captivating speaking skills, we believe that Adrian will have a long-standing legacy with our organization. And we're so thrilled to have you here today, Adrian. Thank you, Loretto. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do outside from, you know, being involved in the in the Casey work. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, um, so my name is Adrian E. Castillo. I, uh, I'm an environmental scientist with the uh, U.S. Geological Survey in, in Davie, Florida. Um, I'm also a licensed massage therapist, a musician, and as you mentioned, a spiritual seeker and a uh, student of the Casey readings. Um, I've been studying the Casey readings since it was about 2007. And I just, as soon as I, as soon as I was exposed to Edgar Casey and his story, I just immediately resonated with the information. And I just started, you know, just researching, researching. And it was perfect because it was just kind of divine intervention because I was going through my own little um, series of changes and developments in my life. And it was like the yeah. perfect guidance that I was looking for to understand what was going on and to kind of guide me a little better. So ever since then, I've just, you know, gotten really deep into it. And then life just kind of jolted me into um, sharing the information. And, you know, like you said, speaking about it. And I've just been doing that, just whatever I can to share the information that's helped me um, help others find their yeah, path. I, I do. I love that. And, you know, we had a conversation um, a couple times, you know, before this interview, and um, you were telling me a little bit about your story of how you just kind of became a speaker out of um, like a funny <laughs> story about it. So why don't you share with us a little bit about that? I mean, you kind of were put on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I said, um, uh, spirit or the universe has kind of jolted me into it um because like I said I had um I had been exposed to the Edgar Casey information in 2007 and I was just in like I said I was going through some health issues some financial issues uh, you know uh, just all sorts of changes and I pretty much just isolated myself in this little hermit shell of just study um <laughs> so I was just reading reading and just you know understanding applying the information and it and it went from 2007 to 2016 that something just intuition just called me you know just just kind of like uh prompted me mm -hmm. to reach out more to the area and the boca um uh conference which is part of like you said the southeast regions uh um, um go coal steam and there was a presentation coming up on on uh, uh, the late and great Robert J. Grant, who wrote a who wrote a book on um, Edgar Casey on angels, archangels, and and the unseen forces. Mm -hmm. And I loved the book, and just something about it just once again just resonated with me. So I I immediately yeah. reached out to the the Boca the Boca team and just volunteered my time, saying, "Hey guys, I've never been to an Edgar Casey conference. I love the readings." You know, if there's any way I can volunteer and help out wherever I can with books or whatever, I don't really know what happens here. Um, I'd be happy to help. And Gina immediately responded. She's like, thanks. We could always use the extra hand. Mm -hmm. And then at the time of the presentation, everything just <laughs> went crazy because um, oh, Rob had gotten really, really ill just before the presentation to the point where he had missed his flight. So no, everything was, you know, just anarchy. The presentation was supposed to be um, Friday evening and then all day Saturday. So she got a replacement for Friday 
And that same woman, Angela, she started the morning series because Rob still we could we couldn't we couldn't get a um, get a reach for him on him. And by the morning, she was already Angela was already you know exhausted. But then Rob showed up um, just before noontime. But we could all tell that there was there was um, you know something that he wasn't feeling right. He just he was ill. He. He was just, you know, scattered brained and, and just ungrounded and he was struggling. He was, he was, he was really having a hard time. Oh my um, goodness. Yeah. But he was ambitious. He was like, no, I can do this. Like, this is why I'm here. I want to help. I want to share this information. So he gave it a go and it was just, it was, it was gently, I say it was a mess because he, he couldn't perform. He couldn't um, articulate. He couldn't provide the information he was stuttering he was getting caught up on himself so gina just immediately you know cut him off and say all right guys let's take a moment you just got in let's go for a lunch break and then kind of regather ourselves and then <laughs> it was like uh right in that time um slot of lunch i reached out to gina and i said hey guys you know if there's anything i can do to help out in this afternoon session uh you know I, I can help Rob whatever way I can. I love the information. I love his books, whatever I can do. And of course, she just looked at me and like the whole group were looking at me like, dude, we don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I, I get it. I get it. I'm just offering whatever I can do to help out. After lunch, Gina talked to Rob and she said, yeah, Rob, Rob can't do this. He's, he's, he's trying his best, but he's just, he's unable to gather his thoughts, organize, structure, so then I'm just there sitting down, um, eating some crackers. And then Gina comes by and she's like, hey, so you're offered to help out. Um, <laughs> do you think you could say a little bit and talk a little bit? I'm like, well, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's what I was trying to, you know, just humbly offer whatever I can do. Uh, when, you know, when do you want me to try to figure something out? And she said, now. Like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. So it was like no prep or anything like that. Right. So, what a way to put you on the spot. That's why I say spirit just kind of jolted me. It was, <laughs> yeah. So, but I, I, like I said, I, I, I love the information and I just uh, focused on that. I just, that I love the information and I, and I love uh, Rob's books and I have an appreciation for the readings because of how much they've helped me in every aspect of my life. So, you know, instead of focusing on, my nerves or myself, I just focused on the information. Grab yeah. Rob's book. Uh, Gina sat in the front. It was kind of funny. Um, and we ended up going on for like two and a half hours just talking about Rob's book. I just, I grabbed his book. I grabbed his table of contents and I just started to, you know, just, uh, just kind of hash out the summary of the little, of the little subject. And then she, Gina came up to me afterwards and she was like, you know, just so you know, I sat in the front because if you were terrible, I was going to cut you off. <laughs> and I said, well, that's reassuring, but I get it once again. I mean, you guys don't know me. I've, I've never met anybody. So yeah, that's, that's, that was, um, that what was, an experience. Tell me about it. And then it ended up being really beautiful because then we had like a prayer session for, for Rob to help him on his way. And, um, he found out about what I and the other, the other speakers did to, to help get the presentation going and to support him and, and, and his book. And he could just came up to me and he was just so grateful, so appreciative. And we exchanged numbers and Rob and I, we became like brothers from another mother. Like it was like divine magic. He, uh. he like, yeah, Rob became my, my Edgar Casey guru. The, I mean, Rob was one of the five individuals that digitized the readings five years just with the readings typing it all out <laughs> there was oh no word gosh. documents there was just like dos prompts like this is incredible so his knowledge of the of the readings was you know it was it was like an anomaly because he, he spent five years just you know typing proofreading typing proofreading yeah so, what an incredible mentorship that ex that probably exactly. <laughs> if there was like a master's program, master's degree in Edgar Casey readings, <laughs> the Rob provided that for me. So, um, so yeah, we uh, um, we ended up finding out later that Rob had had a mini stroke, and that's oh. so. Think about wow. the physical uh, struggles that he was going through. That's why the stuttering, the ungroundedness. Yeah. 
he had a mini stroke and he ended up passing away from a full blown stroke a, a few few years later. But um, yeah, so that that was what happened. And and from then on, I became a, 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 a part of the Boca team. We just all we've been working together, you know, to do annual conferences, uh, to continue doing annual conferences um, in, in the Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale area. And then eventually I started to meet um, um, Allison Parker Hedrick, Mar- you know, Martha Loveland, Allison, Allison Ray, um, all these beautiful lights within the ARE. And mm-hmm. I've been grateful to have been able to have this opportunity to work with the ARE for all that yeah. the Casey readings have helped me to be able to share that in kind by helping pass on this work, working with Kevin Tedeschi, working with John Van Auken, you know, all these wonderful people who have um, dedicated their, their lives to, you know, doing what they can to make the world a little bit of a better place, a little bit of a brighter place based on the information in these readings. Yes. So it's been, a, it's been an interesting and wild, wild journey to say this, yeah. to say the least. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like it. And, you know, every time that I talk with you, I really enjoy our conversations because you always share something with me from the readings that I had no idea about, or, you know, like a different perspective that I had not thought of. And that's one of the things that I love about the readings is that, you know, they speak to people in different ways. And that's why it's so valuable to to share because the message that I might have received might have been completely different than, than what you received. But getting to find out uh, you know, the perception of other people with the readings of the material is so valuable because it gives you such a wider perspective of all the um, wisdom that's in the readings and uh, the messages of hope and love and everything. Yeah. So every time that I was spoken with you, you've left me with just a little bit of extra information that I didn't know about. So I, I, I appreciated that um, from our conversations. Well, you're very, you're very welcome. And everyone can take something a little different because, you know, that, that, that's the beauty of the way the Casey readings explained divinity is, you know, oftentimes Casey said, God, he, he referred to God as the creative forces. And, and, and that's the key is look at the, look at the words he's intentionally using creative forces, the forces of creativity. It's not rigid. It's creative. So therefore, yes, everyone's going to take something a little different because it's a creative process. Your spiritual development, your growth as a human being is growth like a plant. It's patient and it's, you know, dynamic and it's a little bit each day and a little bit each day. And it's like a, it's like the words that he spoke were symbols, you know, so we say, um, you know, uh, a picture is worth a, worth a thousand words, mm. but a symbol is worth 10,000 words. Because if you think about that, everyone can look at one symbol and interpret it just a little differently. And to yeah. me, I see that as beauty because spirit is creative. So spirit is an artist. Spirit uses symbols because it's efficient. It's trying to cram all as much information as efficiently as possible so that everyone is getting something from it and i find that just a beautiful experience because yeah i see that all the time with everybody um Mm -hmm. and and yeah that's going to lead into my coming talk so Uh, you do have um you know a program coming up here shortly the first week of february um is one of our salt growth saturday programs um and it's called the seven year cycle and you're going to be focusing on our body's ability to regenerate itself every seven years, but it, not just our bodies, but you know our mind, um, mind, body, and soul, basically. Um, so, first, I wanted to know what got you interested in that material, and then you know for you to share with us a little bit of what you're going to be covering during that program. Yeah, sure. So it's it's really interesting because. Um, the funny, the funny story behind it was it wasn't like this grand or like epic or dramatic thing like, oh, the seven years. No, I was 
I was on eBay, just I was trying to search for circulating files because I had found, you know, the section in the in the members in the, um, on, in, you know, on eggyourcasey.org, the members section, there's all the circulating files, whether they're medical or non-medical. Mm-hmm. But I had known from visiting the the ARE library that there there's a lot of circulating files that just hadn't been digitized or that that were in the library and people have had, had purchased them and then taken them home. So I knew there was a lot more circulating files that were available and searching online for other circulating files. And I found that people were like selling random circulating files on, on eBay. And <laughs> one of them I found on music, osteopathy and the seven year cycle. And I had never heard of the seven year cycle. So I was like, that sounds really interesting. I love the number seven. So, and I'm, you know, massage therapist. I love the, you know, anatomy, the human body. So I just, just prompt, just got this intuitive prompt to just get it. And, um, and I just started reading it and I was just like, this is, this is amazing. This is really, really interesting. Um, but as you were saying that everybody takes something a little bit differently, um, with the readings, they interpret certain information. They take a, they take a phrase, I started to notice that within myself, I was gathering all sorts of different pieces of information and I was developing like different perspectives. I was like, wait a minute, Casey been, Casey's saying this, he's saying this. There's a pattern here. There's little patterns. And I was studying music at the time and I was studying a program of, of the relationship between music and cognitive function or the brain and mm-hmm. how the brain responds while listening to music. And I was just, I could, it, it was like this divine pl- blueprint. Everything I was doing, there was a purpose. It was all like synchronized. So the, the little bits of information I was learning in the music aspect kind of opened me to a different perspective when I was reading the seven year cycle. And that's, to make a long story short, to, cut it, to simplify what I'm trying to say is that became the approach that I wanted to present with this presentation where, yeah, we're going to be talking about anatomy. We're going to be talking about the seven year cycle, but more importantly, we're going to be talking about reading between the lines. Every, a lot of people have read the KC health readings, but there's a lot of information in there that you have to dig in a little bit differently and read with your third eye, not necessarily your physical eyes, because the physical world is symbolic it's a shadow of the spiritual world. There's a pattern that has meaning. There's a pattern in nature, in all of nature. There's meaning. You know, spirit created the physical world at a time where, you know, souls had already been rebelling against the love of the divine and the, and the will of the divine. So even the physical world was created not just out of a desire for to create art because, you know, spirit is the ultimate artist, but to leave a trail of breadcrumbs. So as souls study that art, as souls study those landscapes, there's a pattern. His pattern is there. Spirit's pattern Mm -hmm. is there. And the human body is the temple. It is the ideal vessel, the ideal shell for the soul. So there's a trail of breadcrumbs in the human body in the way it works in the way it operates in its creative flow, all of it is there. And if you just kind of start to pick out, you know, when Casey would say, oh, you know, uh, music, only music may span the distance between the infinite and the finite. Well, yes, that's amazing. But also he's talking about, it's a symbol. It's physical terms too. The finite and the infinite become the right and left hemispheres, mm. right? Right hemisphere, we tend to think of, you know, the left side of the body, creative, infinite. The left side is more analytical. It's more right. finite. So you see, you take the words and you you dig in just a little bit deeper because there's a beautiful pattern. And that's my prayer. That is my intention, is that when people see the presentation or, or look in the information, they're not just getting, okay, how does this, you know, the tissue of the, the liver repair itself. Yes, that's fantastic. That's, it's beautiful. There's a system there. But what does that mean spiritually? 
mm-hmm. the overall the overall process there's patience there's grace there's a lot of the fruits of the spirit there's yeah. so much it, there's a lot deeper message um exactly exactly it's looking between the lines and the way i like to say it is you know learning from my experiences of my natural interests and talents like science and health you know i struggled for many years to 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 be at peace with myself because i have all of these interests mm-hmm. all of these just like random interests um and of course a lot of a lot of times in in society it's it's like okay you're just a jack of all trades a master of none but when i would study the casey readings and he would talk about people who had multiple interests he said the purpose is for you to learn how to integrate your various interests as spiritual understanding so through that i it started to just help me to work with my own energies and realize yeah i'm studying the human body i'm being a scientist i'm being a healthcare practitioner but with the basis of spiritual understanding i realize that i'm not only studying creation to understand creation i'm willing myself to study creation to better understand the creator there's a pattern and that's yeah. to me where science and spirituality become one and the same you know two sides of the same coin and casey talked about that even with sir isaac newton like he 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 had a lot of respect for newton and he said that's what newton did he realized that he had a relationship with the universe he read between the lines it's not just the physical again that's my intention just trying to connect the dots yes i love that um i i think it's valuable uh, especially in this time and also you know for people that are just starting out with the casey material it's hard it's really it's difficult to get into and to really grasp what he's trying to say but i love the um you know i love your your the way that you're taking it because you're really kind of trying to understand the symbology that's behind it um and and that that's very valuable because that's what's needed you know you can't just take it um too literal you know you can't just uh, take it for what's written on the page there's so much more that um his readings are trying to convey so i i i love that you're trying to share that aspect I I appreciate that and and yeah that's that's uh uh you know a prayer of mine that yeah as people are just getting into the readings or not or you know if or not just that maybe they've uh, been studying the readings for you know a t- few decades if you just provide one second of a new perspective on that information well pff, it all becomes new again it all becomes yeah. fresh again and yes you're absolutely right it it um it's challenging you know the language in the readings is very different um but there was always a reason like i said if you read between the lines you know the spiritual path isn't for everyone in this lifetime it's little by little once again it's patience so even with the casey readings there's a spiritual lesson that's being that's being presented to anyone who reads the readings or anyone that goes about life If you look at Casey's, you know, um suggestions on diet and health, they were very different from contemporary thought. And a lot of times it's is very difficult and very challenging because it kind of goes against the grain, but it's like no, in reality society has been going against the grain of nature <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> in certain things. So what he was trying to say was not to have all these rules, but just get back to the basics. The readings were trying to tell you the body is looking for certain types of things. the body is a temple of the spirit so the reason why you have to kind of go against the grain because it's forcing you to learn patience you have to be patient you have to learn patience you have to learn that the body is patient and you have to respect that if you really want to take better care of the body you have to be in harmony with that patience mm. so yeah you may have to change some things around yeah. but that's what the body needs to to serve you as a spiritual being better the body has the divine's trail of breadcrumbs in it 
And yeah. And I, I mean, the connection of it all, you know, everything it's connected to the mind, body, spirit. So that's the I whole, mean, it that's makes sense. And especially if you're looking at the material and kind of keeping that in your, in your mind, how it's all connected in a way, then, you know, you get to, you get to have maybe more breakthroughs with the material. Exactly. Exactly. That is all we can pray for and hope for and, and just, do the best that we can with what what we have but yeah no i i i get it <laughs> yeah. it's yeah it takes it takes time but um but yeah i just hope it inspires you know others to find their 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 way yeah well it sounds like a really um exciting program here coming up um in february and um it's online so people can um it's going to be live online, but it can also be available on demand afterwards. Um, and I believe that you might be coming back for Congress uh, in June. So that is going to be exciting to have you as well. Well, thank you. Yeah, I am in talks with the with the ARE about 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 building a, a presentation for Congress. So I first and foremost, I'm I'm humbled to be invited to Congress. And yeah, we're just taking it one day at a time as as we kind of navigate the new you know the the new the new paths <laughs> the waters of this new world yes um, but yeah I'm, I'm excited for that for that opportunity and and uh just uh want to do the best that i can to you know help out whoever i can whoever's listening <laughs> yeah well thank you so much adrian i have really enjoyed our conversation and just kind of getting to know you a little bit more and um getting to uh, have other people um, get to know you some more. So um, it's exciting. We are so looking forward um, to what you have coming up and it's a pleasure. No, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you, Loretto. It's, it's always a joy to talk to you and, 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 and share this information, this, this love for the reading. So thank you. Thank you as well. And you're, you're, it's my, my pleasure.